institutions and governments. Kidder Peabody, professionalism worldwide. And public television stations across the nation. Good evening, everyone. It was a relatively good day, as days have gone lately on Wall Street, as the Dow Jones Industrial Average ended with a fractional gain. But it wasn't a good day for the dollar, which resumed its slide today on world currency markets. John Defterius reports from New York. The stock market took a roller coaster ride today with the dollar, which continued to test new lows both here and abroad. The movement in the market was based upon a variety of fears. Now that the market has settled down, now that the stock market has settled down, uh, those fears ha have uh, become much less important. And uh, now it it's back to the dollar again. The dollar headed down sharply this morning until central bankers stepped in to stem a rapid decline. But the dollar was tested further when European community president Jacques Delors said the U.S. was no longer abiding by the G7's Louvre Agreement and that the U.S. would let the dollar decline against the mark. The Treasury Department moved quickly to deny Delors' statement, saying the United States is continuing to implement the Louvre Agreement. The but currency analysts say now, today's drop was uh, already in the works. This movement toward a lower dollar uh, seems to be one in accordance with the expectations of the market and not, uh, not one that comes as a great shock. It came as no shock, analysts say, because the Federal Reserve's move to lower interest rates without the help of both Germany and Japan left the dollar open for decline. Now, analysts say, a large drop in the dollar will cause damage to the U.S. stock and bond markets. And a cheaper dollar means that foreigners will sell stocks and bonds because of the exchange rate loss, and that in turn will trigger further sales by Americans. For now, analysts say, the Fed's options are clear. It can raise interest rates to prop up the dollar and risk recession, or keep interest rates down and let the dollar fall further. My fear, okay, uh, is that they will vacillate back and forth between defending the dollar and stimulating the economy, uh, which to me is the worst of uh, all worlds. While many economists are supporting the Fed's move to lower interest rates to calm the stock market, those same economists complain that it was done without the support of both Germany and Japan. And without that support, economists say, a sharp drop in the dollar could take place. In New York, I'm John Defterius for the Nightly Business Report. Well, unlike the dollar, the stock market's roller coaster ride today ended on a nearly level plane. And with the details of today's market action, here's New York correspondent Neil Cavuto sitting in for Paul Kangas. Neil? Well, no jolts, no gyrations, and in the end, no big loss or big gain for that matter. Just a third of a point uptick in the Dow that had a lot of traders talking it could have been much worse. In fact, when trading opened this morning, things were much worse. The Dow was tumbling more than 63 points at 10 a.m. on fears of a slumping dollar. Anxiety over the greenback persisted, saved only by renewed interest in some of the blue chips. Still, losing issues were running two to one ahead of gainers by midday, a ratio that never changed much throughout trading. The real problem, analysts said, was a persistent fear on the part of investors to commit themselves one way or the other. The market, many argue, remains in a holding pattern. Not quite convinced what is, is that the Dow at this level is really accurate at this level. Continued concern over whether the Dow would flirt with new, lower marks kept many potential buyers at bay in the final hours of trading. And for a change, analysts suspected things probably wouldn't have been much different even had trading continued beyond today's shortened trading hours. Reviewing today, the Dow, as we said, up a little bit more than a third of a point, a theoretical high of 1904.51 against a low of 1767.74. Today's volume running still very strong, 279.4 million shares. When you consider the fact that these are shortened days, that is remarkable. Up volume being bettered by down volume today. The transports down fractionally, the utilities up fractionally. The Dow 65 down a little bit uh, more than 0.7. And the New York Stock Exchange closing tick a negative 202. The S&P 500, 400, and 100 were up but barely, while the SPAC 250 was down 1.74. The other averages, as you can see, New York Stock Exchange down fractionally, NASDAQ down, uh, down almost four and a half points, the value line down more than two and a half points, and the Wilshire 5000 down almost 12 points. Well, the bond market's flight to quality continued in force today. Investors seem to be flocking to treasury issues, most notably of the one to five year variety. And those who weren't actively buying were waiting to see just what the Federal Reserve was going to do with the discount rate. For today, at least, they got their answer. Nothing yet. Reviewing some uh, representative governments, the U.S. Treasury is down 16 30 seconds at 9.09 percent. The GM Acceptance Corp, this new issue unchanged at 9 and a quarter percent. The Shearson Lehman Long Treasury is down a little bit more than 7. The municipal market, these Jacksonville, Florida is down a half at 8.73 percent. And the Fed funds rate closing at 6.5 percent. 
I'll be back with a complete wrap-up on today's market in a moment. On the precious metals markets today, gold prices rose, but platinum and silver fell. On the New York currency markets, the dollar fell sharply against all major European and Japanese currencies after the European community's president said the U.S. was prepared to let the dollar drop to 1.6 marks. The Canadian dollar also gained against the greenback. And oil prices fell in New York after holding steady in London. On Capitol Hill, a House Telecommunications and Finance Subcommittee today began the first of what are likely to be many investigations into last week's stock market crash. The lead-off witness at the closed-door hearing was Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman David Reuter. And afterwards, Reuter told reporters that he's confident actions now in place will reduce the stock market's volatility. This is, I think, the decoupling of the, uh, of the two markets through the closing of the list system in New York. Uh, the automated transfer of, of, uh, of orders from one market to the other has had some effect on, uh, on decrease of volatility. Stepping mostly, but mostly I think that the, uh, that the economic news has now been absorbed by the market and we're, uh, that the fundamentals are, are not likely to shake it as much. Asked whether program trading has been the main source of the stock market's volatility, Reuter said, quote, I can't say what has been the main culprit. Dean? Well, while official Washington tries to figure out who or what was responsible for last week's market crash, many in the Capitol and New York are pointing fingers at Chicago, where stock index futures and options are traded. But today, the Chicago exchanges started to do some pointing back, as correspondent Scott Gerby reports. In the futures trading pits of Chicago, traders are frustrated believing that they are being made the scapegoats for the stock market collapse. Stock market and brokerage company leaders in New York and government officials in Washington are charging that computerized program trading amplified if not triggered the crash. They are starting investigations, calling hearings, and talking about restrictions on index trading. Program trades, which seek to profit from the difference between the prices of index futures and their underlying stocks, can generate huge buy or sell orders. But officials at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which pioneered index futures trading, say to blame stock index products for the volatility is, quote, nonsense. The S&P 500 contract and futures and options generally performed extremely well during this emergency and were, uh, were a saving factor in not making things or stopping things from, from getting worse. Program trading is not an invention of futures markets. It was invented by the securities market. It was used at the New York Stock Exchange long before there were futures. And it's something that those firms want. So I think the New York Stock Exchange is going to have to make the decision with their membership. Uh, it will not stop the futures market. Uh, our market was in existence before there was program trading, and it'll stay there afterwards. The Mercantile Exchange has now set daily limits on price swings for index futures, similar to those employed for hard commodities. The S&P 500 future will not be allowed to move more than 30 points in a single day. After such a move, trading will, in effect, stop. That, officials say, should dampen the feedback effects of panic trading. Market analysts doubt any single event triggered the collapse. They say a series of macroeconomic factors had investors looking for a major break. 